Welcome to Rebuilding Godzilla, Episode 7. In the last episode, we were filing piston rings, and we were assembling an engine to go in my future race car, that uh, R32 GTR. We did that. I did put it together. The engine was all assembled, uh, or it is all assembled. Uh, it was put in the car, so modifications ensued. Uh, and then I went through another seasonal motivation problem with the GTR, like I did last year, because it's it's worked on this thing for well over a year at this point, like filming everything. Let's just say the motivation problem was a little larger this time, mostly because A, the, the thing about rebuilding a car like that isn't necessarily that rebuilding the engine so expensive, because I mean we did talk about how expensive the parts are for that car, but it was the things that you needed to do to that engine to make it reliable and what I wanted. And it's not a situation of getting nickeled and dimed, it's a situation of getting punched and kicked every time you buy any one thing you needed for that car. Um, between all the oiling problems and all the crankshaft dampening shit that you needed to, to buy to make the car work, even with the engine assembled and in the car, I was probably, and an ECU, I had an ECU and all the electronics sitting there ready to go, I was still... I mean, by my last count, I was still maybe $10,000 off from first start between injectors and fuel rails and getting everything wired and getting the harness done and turbos and, and all that shit. I, every time I did the math, it was like, this is going to be a $100,000 car when I'm done with it, and it's still going to be worth the same as it would be if it was stock. And I don't care that much about what the car's worth, per se. But as I drove newer and more interesting cars, and as I continued to race my wife's M3, I sort of realized that I didn't think that Skyline was ever going to handle like a modern car. It wasn't going to beat the M3 anywhere, and it wasn't going to um, it wasn't going to do what I wanted it to do in the way I wanted it to do it, in the terms of being something that was wonderful to drive. Basically, it would have been very fast and it would have been really cool, and that's about where the, the positives would have stopped. Stopped. You can't tell I'm talking a bit in the past tense about it, and that is because in October here, 2020, uh, middle pandemic, uh, I sold someone <laughs> showed up, and he bought that car off me in shambles for about five thousand dollars more than I paid for it in 2015 in running driving condition. So it's not like I made money on it based on the fact that I spent all that money on that engine and that build. Um, but I sold it, and I sold it for two reasons, three reasons. One, the guy buying it is local, so the car is still around us, and I will still see it, which is kind of cool. Um, two, it was a money pit, and it was still a money pit, and it wasn't even close to being done being a money pit. And three, I was tired of it being in my garage, honestly. Um, when we got the lift, one of the things we mentioned in that video, in fact, was how the lift will pay for itself because of all the work I get to do for other people on it. And with that GTR in my life, that was not true because the GTR was on the lift 24-7. And if it was even sprinkling outside, it's not like I could roll it outside and have any paint on it or anything. So not only was it taking all my money, but it was preventing me from making a little money too. So, yeah, October 2020, I sold that, sold the GTR to a, a friend, and um, we'll, 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 we'll see if we can't get over there and do a little update video on it. We'll, we'll you know, the GTR story probably not completely over on um, Carfoolery since it is only maybe 25 minutes up the road. So, um, that's cool, but I just had to, I just had to, you know, mentally move on and try to find something that was more my style, something that we could, something that we could go racing in that didn't need a bunch of work, something that somehow was more unique than a Skyline, you know? That will do, that will do just fine. You see the nose of it? <laughs> you can see something. All right. Uh, if you're wondering, I. This isn't mine. <laughs> um, this is a cool car, but this is a, a car I'm working on. 
current working theory is the clutch is absolutely exploded in it. Um, but this is a 5 meter V10 with 500 horsepower, so it's a hell of a cool car. Not my customer car, just uh, th this is the reason why the GTR can't, you know, was unsustainable. This is the kind of stuff I do for people. It's hard to work on this when the GTR is in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right.